הרב זילברסטין, in his uh, extraordinary uh, uh, series of ספרים called עלינו לשבח, Uh, if you've been to a Jewish bookstore before, you surely have seen these uh, green books before. Uh, it's a very famous series. It's in Hebrew, it's in English, and I'm sure it's probably in other languages also. Rav Zilberstein, in this week's parasha, uh, in this week's parasha, parashat Bamidbar, uh, he brings uh, a couple of things. First, he says, if you notice that the uh, Nasi, of the tribe of Gad, in this week's Parashat Bamidbar, when they're uh, doing the census, the, uh, the Nasi of uh, the tribe of Gad is referred to as in two names. The first time, he's referred to as a uh, uh, Elifa, Elisaf, Eliasaf ben Reuel, but then later on in Parashat Naso, he is uh, referred to as Eliasaf ben Deuel. So the Chachamim ask, Why is the same exact person referred to in two different names? The Sefer Imre Noam that the Alenu uh, Shabach uh, brings writes that at the time of this census, Akadosh Baruch Hu chose leaders in each tribe, in each section, and he chose that the tribe of Dan was going to be the leader of the four divisions, subdivisions. And technically, the tribe of God could have complained about this because he should have been technically, if you're looking at uh, uh, a uh, firstborn rights, just like Dan was Bil'az firstborn, uh, uh, God was Zilpah's firstborn. So technically, the, the Nasi of God could have complained about this and protested. Why, why him? Why not me? He learns Torah, I learn Torah. He's a firstborn, I'm a firstborn. But what did the uh, leader of the tribe of Gad, Eliasaf ben Deuel, do? Nothing. He did nothing. He simply knew that if this is what happened, this was the outcome, this is the will of Hashem. And he stayed quiet, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu saw, Oh, I tested you. I gave your fellow what anybody else, including yourself, would want. And instead of complaining like everybody else, you simply accepted my judgment. You and I are friends. And therefore your name will change to Reuel. What's Reuel? The friend of God. The friend of God. Re, re is, a, is a friend. The friend of God. So we see here, Rabotai, that when a person accepts a decree uh, in, in, in happiness, There's a significant value to it, and even more so when a person knows how to give in, to give in, whether it be in, uh, in one thing or another, in an argument, in a marriage, in a uh, shiduch, in a business partnership, in a business dispute. One of the uh, signs of a, uh, uh, of a good dayan is, is one that's not necessarily always looking to, uh, uh, to prove one party right or another, but sometimes look to see if there could be a compromise where both parties uh, would in essence contribute and give in at the same time. And one of the beautiful things here you see that Rav Zilberstein brings is that he gives you examples of real life stories and he says that in the year 2003, 57-63, there was an extraordinary Ben Torah, a Torah scholar that uh, got married Uh, and uh, also, you know, found himself an extraordinary shiduch that the whole community was in awe about. All of the things were perfect, whether it was money, looks, yichus, everything was right. And this, this uh, chacham also was growing in Torah exponentially. And on top of that, everything was working for him. It seemed like as if everything he's touching was, was gold, was turning into gold. And it was unbelievable. And of course, people within the community... Uh, are always looking to see, okay, these tzaddikim did something. Why do I need to know that these tzaddikim did great things? Because I want to know what, uh, you know, what, what did they do that I could potentially repeat? Maybe I can't fast for a week at a time. Maybe I can't uh, finish the shas every single year. Maybe I can't do all of these great things. But sometimes you'll see that it's the small things that count the most. You know, it's, it's a, they, no one goes from, uh, from nothing to full force on day one. 
But the point being is that Akadosh Baruch Hu sends us different tests. And Rav Zobestin brings the story of a Ben Torah that nearly 20 years ago, it looked like everything was going for him and people within the community were looking to see what is this young man's merit that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is blessing him so much. And his Rav tells the story. He says, you guys think that everything is going well for him now and you're asking, you think it started now? He goes, no, no. It started eight years ago. Eight years ago, this young man had a bar mitzvah. And to, you know, he studied for this bar mitzvah. He made sure that he knew the parasha and the aftarah left and right. He spent an enormous amount of time and surely he wanted to make sure that he's going to do his bar mitzvah in his shul, in his community, with his family, with everybody knows him. He grew up there. But just so happened that his friend also had a bar mitzvah the same exact day. They have the same birthday. And he also studied. And he also worked hard. And he also lived in the same community. And of course, they have to have the bar mitzvah the same day, but uh, that doesn't work. Well, only one of you can read from the Torah. So they came to me, the Rav says. And I said to them, listen, you can do, you can uh, uh, do a lot for it. And uh, whoever wins, uh, like so, sort of like a coin toss, whoever wins uh, is going to get it. And as you would have it, our dear Chatan won. And later that night, the Chatan looked at himself in the mirror and he couldn't deal with it. He couldn't deal with the fact that his friend is going to be sad on his bar mitzvah because the only other place that he could do his bar mitzvah is a relatively far away, a completely different community where nobody knows him. He can't change the day of bar mitzvah. And uh, he, on the other hand, will be happy because he's going to uh, get his bar mitzvah and everybody that knows him is going to see him. And he decided that night that no, he cannot come to terms with this and the very next morning, he told his friend, you can have it. You have the bar mitzvah in our shul, and I'm going to do it in that faraway location. The look on his friend's face was extraordinary. The Rav says, I can't describe to you the joy that was in the other boy felt when he learned that he would be able to celebrate his bar mitzvah in our shul. His face lit up. And he couldn't stop thanking our Chatan for the great favor he had done for him. And the Rav says that I decided after that to keep an eye. To keep an eye on this boy and watch how Hashem would eventually reward him for his noble deed. And I can testify that from that day on, he became a completely new person. He was successful in everything that he did. Accomplishing great things both in learning Torah and in other endeavors. And this Shiduch... There was tremendous siyat dishmaya. Certainly, there was a lot of hard work, but when a person looks above and knows that everything that he has is from a Kadosh Baruch Hu, including the tests, including what sometimes looks like a blessing but is really not, and sometimes what looks like a curse but in reality is a blessing. A person that is committed to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, knows exactly where his panasa, where his sustenance is coming from. And any time a person is, uh, decides to give, uh, to give in, there is no way that that person is going to lose as a result. Sure to share it. Have a good day to learn too.